thanks praveen um, a very very warm afternoon to everybody good to have uh, uh, such senior leaders on the same platform thank you praveen for setting the context so well i think uh, while i was listening to you um, uh, i could relate a lot to how we are implementing it in our organization at this point in time uh, first of all um, i am sheetal jarat sharma and uh, i take care of uh, employee experience uh, pan india for iifl home finance so we are a housing finance uh, organization uh, iifl and um, it's a larger group however we've split it into three broad uh, entities and i uh, take care of um, the housing finance piece um relatively a new role i think uh, i guess when i was hired here uh, i wasn't too sure about uh, uh, what this role would be um, however once i've gotten into it i think it's a it's a fabulous role all organizations should uh, you know kind of adopt to it and that's why i chose this topic uh, as well for me because it it related very very closely to uh, what we believe in uh, how we implement stuff and the difference we are trying to bring in so when i talk about employee experience broadly it comes under the uh, hr uh, purview of uh, any organization uh, under the human resources piece i had employee experience for uh, iifl home finance and we broadly take care of uh, every need of an employee who enters into the organization so he's hired till the retire cycle so the entire hire to retire cycle is what uh, we focus on um, uh, when a person comes on board a uh, relatively newer concept we've heard a lot about uh, digital experience we've heard a lot about customer experience and ensuring we meet all of that um, employee experience uh, slightly new but i think um, we try to we trying to play around a lot um, with this and um, uh, that's how you know post covid uh, this particular uh, space gave us an opportunity to explore even more windows um and like typically i do with my team uh, at iifl uh, we introduce each other in a typical um, iifl home finance style and that's what we do in all our virtual meets and i'll take that opportunity uh, a one minute uh, to introduce me better so that's what i am on paper uh, but if you want to probably know the real me <laughs> a little bit closer to that uh, this is how it goes hey i'm sheetal happiness coach i need to know everybody's soul coming to me i'm an hr or record new people new setup simply strikes a chord a part time mood manager for companies and core a proud full time mommy of a young little four a theater enthusiast i like to sing music writing travel is my thing an energetic life buyer passion pe i'm high aspiring to spread happiness for which limit is the sky so let's get to unwork let's play on our quirks time to rock and roll and for some whole cold come with me happiness mood set karte hain together we are aaj to kuch too funny karte hain so that's how we kind of introduce all our sessions uh, especially when they've gone virtual um, and that's the kind of mood which we set up so broadly uh, when i talk about uh, Uh, employee experience uh, it comes uh, with a with a lot of baggage of uh, making people happy so you would have heard a lot about uh, you know happiness coaches uh, being there on um, you know uh, uh, kind of practicing uh, part time uh, you would have heard a lot about people who are into providing that um, happiness um, initiatives to people across uh, even on consulting basis nowadays organizations have started setting up these teams uh, broadly they are more like mood uplifter uh, uplifters of the organizations um, and they are backed by very very strong data analytics and um, uh, ai based chatbots so that's my friend uh, at work um, so i think uh, that's enough of how i wanted to introduce and send context to this entire employee experience thing i would just share a couple of slides and from there take up on this uh, very very interesting topic how to com build competencies um uh, without investing time of uh, in in one room training room kind of a setup and uh, devoting multiple hours sitting in a training room so so let's look at that angle give me a minute i'll just share share my slide
Naveen, if you can confirm, are you able to see my slide? Uh, yes, Shital, we can see that. Brilliant. Okay, so on that note, uh, uh, I'll give it a little twist. When we talk about competency building and taking cue from where Praveen left actually, um, we decided uh, post COVID in our organization that it is time uh, that there should be a change in the skill sets uh, of our people because of obviously uh, COVID. And um, to put it nicely, uh, we rebranded our entire competency uh, framework strategy at our workplace. So I'll not um, go from a, a theoretical perspective. I'll take example of my own organization and um, then take this further. All right. Uh, so very quickly uh, about our organization. IFL Home Finance, like I said, it is a fintech housing finance company. When I say it's a fintech organization, uh, I mean to say that we are completely, completely digitized. So what we technically do is um, we provide loans to customers um, to purchase their first house. So uh, primarily uh, we drive this for our affordable housing segment. When I say affordable housing, I mean to say that we cater to our EWS and LIG category of customers, um, ensuring that each of them who've never purchased their single house as well, they purchase their house through our loans. So that's the background, that's the story to it. Um, uh, we have been in this affordable home loans business um, and I should say uh, it has been almost six years that we've been in this space so from a home loans perspective, otherwise we are a 20 year old organization. Uh, we have around 126 branches like you can see. Entire process of providing the loan uh, is absolutely digitized uh, in our case. For example, if you, if you go out and buy a loan, uh, we ensure we can turn that around from login to dispersal of the loan in one day's time. That's the, that's the piece which we have worked on. And that is because we have our in-house in application called Jhatpad application, which ensures the digitization of the same. So uh, that's what we are into primarily. Uh, we've been as an organization ESG driven. When I talk about ESG, that is completely on uh, environment, social and governance. So we are aligned to the SDG goals of UN and are working continuously towards it to afford, you know, to kind of um, uh, enhance ourselves on the green, sustainable, affordable home side. That's the side of it. EX focused, when I say EX, that's employee experience. Now that's the quick background. What happened post COVID? Uh, I think everything was running smooth. So we were doing this piece, which I've shown the affordable housing segment going absolutely smooth. Post COVID, we had a business impact. Uh, obviously, because people were obviously not buying homes. So that was a clear cut impact. We had people impact because um, larger organization, larger setup, no business happening, people would be impacted some way or the other. We had a big time engagement impact. So, uh, for example, let's say we are continuously into this, um, in, uh, you know, taking these kind of initiatives and getting into that engagement model. Suddenly, for almost a month and a half, till we kind of brainstormed and uh, reinitiated our ideas, we, uh, uh, you know, couldn't really engage with our people because everybody was slightly lost. What is happening? You know, everything is stuck, uh, you know, shut up, and uh, there's nothing, nothing progressive which is happening. That is when we realized, I think almost uh, it was mid of April, uh, uh, we, we actually kind of brainstormed together over Zoom and we realized that there was a need for building new competencies across the board. When I say across the board, it was across departments, it was across levels, starting from my CEO to my uh, fleet on street uh, people. Um, it, there was, when I talk about building new competencies, since the competencies which need to be built are new, we needed to rebrand the approach to build our competencies within the organization. This was the uh, turning point. I think we didn't really realize uh, that we had to rebrand everything. Same old wine would not work anymore. That was, the, that was the feeling and I think it was almost a month since we realized it. That's when uh, we took it up like a project uh, when I talk about competency building uh, and our team uh, we ensured streamlining but in a different avatar not probably in a very very extensive uh, intensive fashion which a lot of organizations are working on we thought we'll kind of explore a bit more 
so it opened a lot of uh, new opportunities for us and uh, uh, this was a you know probably a clean slate for us so uh, i i'll share specific examples to probably help understand i'll be more than happy to take questions alongside as well on the chat praveen you'll probably have to help me because i can't see the chat window when i'm sharing the screen so uh, uh, when i talk about competency types we realized we needed to uh, invest in three types of competencies one was the skills and the knowledge which is domain specific which is department specific if i'm a sales person and we are we are a sales driven organization 80% of my staff are sales people uh, you know almost 75% of my people are feet on street guys so i need to understand their tempo their psyche i need to figure out uh, what is it that they need how can i make them more competitive within this kind of a setup a uh, product process policy so this kind of piece comes under the skills and the knowledge side of it when i talk about behavior it could be individual it could be organization specific when i talk about attitude which is which was obviously the difficult one we still struggling with it that requires a shift in the thought process that requires real alignment to the organization vision for example i was functioning in a specific manner as an organization everything turned upside down you know every and I, i'll share that as an example Uh, so when i said skills and knowledge uh, post pandemic specific competency uh, if you can see the third column and this is this is actually what happened uh, skills and knowledge product selling shift which meant that post covid we realized that the home loan piece of it will not sell and we are an i fell home finance housing finance company we sell home loans our product was outdated it was not in any more uh, and we knew this would this would kind of be like this for let's say till maybe till october um, so we decided to not sell home loans but we used to sell health insurance along with the home loan we decided to sell health insurance as a full time product and uh, somehow uh, people obviously thought that this is not something which uh, uh, you know they can buy uh, in in an organization like this but we thought yaar karna padega matlab we don't have an option we have to do that and um, uh, once we'll probably settle we'll start home loans alongside and that's what it has happened you know couple of a uh, couple of locations like let's say delhi or rajasthan slightly better off uh, they picked up home loans again uh, you know starting maybe july end is where we have picked up so we thought uh, you know uh, this is a clear cut competency need because if somebody has been trained for so many years to sell a home loan how will we make that shift to sell health insurance uh, and that too you're not meeting the person face to face social distancing uh, only interacting with people on calls and you know home loan ke liye to it was it was just like hum log field pe jate the you know and they, their work was to go on field they were not telecallers they were people who used to go on field get the file that was the skill set but now we had to convert them into a broadly a person who could sell over phone and that was the intent so that was one challenge very very critical second one i'll take all of these three together and we'll tell you i'll tell you how we probably resolved it and probably then conclude behavior when i talk about behavior uh, coping up with the pandemic was absolutely and i'm sure this was with everybody sitting at at home uh, you 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 had to cope with a lot of things uh, there was pressure from your bosses because Uh, in a sales setup like ours, uh, there are high chances that we have people at the leadership level who feel that अच्छा ये तो घर से काम कर रहा होगी must not be working or uh, you know उतनी uh, devotion नहीं आती you know when you're working from home that kind of a mindset and that is true uh, a lot of people have that in an organization like ours we had to redefine the mental makeup of our FOS FOS is our feet on street which was our maximum janta. uh we had to ensure that everything was tuned in properly and they understood that tumhe nikalenge nahi so because they also realized yaar ki do mahine se kuch nahi kaam kar rahe they're not doing anything they were not getting incentives in any case because half of their salary comes from the incentive piece so that was anyways a loss secondly they knew ki kuch ho nahi raha hai maybe you know they'll ask us to go so we had to tune in the mental makeup of our people um and lastly we had to change the attitude why because everything now was to be digitized so where i used to go to a person to his house take his file get that signed this entire process 
was digitized. So hats off to our digital team as well. Our digital strategy, it's an in-house team. We did a, did a couple of third party interventions. We did some integrations and we ensured that this entire digital, the digital stream of it is, is kind of uh, matched uh, in, in let's say a month and a half's time. Uh, and I think by April mid or April end, we were absolutely ready uh, with our digital setup. Which again, uh, which is again commendable. I've been speaking to people in this industry, and uh, we feel that this is not something which a lot of organizations have done in any case. So uh, uh, this was obviously there. Then there was alignment to ESG, complete profitability. When I say that, uh, we were also focusing during the post-COVID days to ensure that this competency kind of came in uh, within our people. They understood that how critical it is to, uh, you know, also take care of environment, society and governance angle to it. For example, if I'm coming to office, I'm coming without a mask because I feel that I don't have anything. So that kind of an awareness also had to be imparted to our people. Kind of people so that's why i said competency is very very subjective and it is subjective to the audience uh, we are working with it is subjective to the uh, uh, kind of a uh, kind of an organization or location i am functioning with and that's what we had to tune in for ourselves uh, during this time so i'll i'll come back to this slide but uh, broadly uh, we have identified three types of a competency needs for ourselves in our organizations. I've given you specific examples. I'll take care of them, cater them, each of them. So we then decided that how to embrace change. So we've realized that COVID ho gaya and uh, post COVID, we've realized that uh, 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 we have these three specific key competency needs, which are missing, which are absolutely missing. So kya kare, you know, how to kind of work on it. We thought we will follow an employee experience focused competency building, which is slightly new. Uh, I feel that uh, we've experimented with this and it has come out really well. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'd love to take your questions in case you'd want to implement in your organizations, take it further, etc. But what is employee experience? I, I told you, it's, it's the entire hire to retire life cycle of employees and how to rebuild competency. So I have evaluated three particular sets of competencies which we need to rebuild, but how to rebuild? So we developed our own EX, focused competency model. So if you go online, you know, there are, there are a lot of competency frameworks, but I cannot pick them up because they will not work for my organization. My organization has a different set of audience, a different set of people, uh, uh, you know, who need to be groomed, who need to be trained, for whom I need to do a lot of learning and engagement interventions. Uh, so we thought we'll have to, we'll have, we'll have to kind of, you know, merge uh, create our own approach and that's how we came up with our own competency model which we call as our EX focused competency model. EX stands for employee experience. We call it, uh, it's pretty interesting, we call it REAP to LEAP model. So uh, REAP to LEAP, uh, that's our in-house model. Um, REAP stands for the deliverables, the process of taking that kind of an action towards meeting those competencies and LEAP stands for uh, evaluating of those competencies. That means if I have worked on providing a, or building a competency in a particular person, my REAP program is a, is a wholesome program which will focus on providing that training, providing that competency building. However, has that worked or not? Is this person, has that competency gap being filled or not? That is evaluated by my LEAP program. At this point in time, we are managing it in-house. So, uh, but obviously as it expands, we'll have to probably take it to a bigger level. When I talk about REAP, REAP stands for R, review content. E, engagement intervention. A, appropriate branding. P, platforms for circulation. That means when I am building a competency of a person, I need to look at the engagement intervention. That is clear. You know, it could be a training. It could be an emailer which I'm sending to a person. Any engagement intervention. But it has to be packaged well. It has to have the right content. For example, my feet on street guys, they are, they are barely graduates. Right? If I, if I probably send them a high flyer, uh, uh, very, very high flyer uh, English driven content, they'd probably not read it. Even if they read it, they would not understand or grasp the basic essence of it. So I need to communicate to them in their own style, their own language. So for example, when, when uh, TikTok became a rage, 
we were just we were just sending them videos creating them in house on tiktok you know because that worked with them that was the audience that i was they would probably never go on twitter they would not they they never go on linkedin we have our own in house workplace app which is which is uh, which is workplace by facebook itself it was so hard for us to bring them there but uh, it took us 3 years you know to kind of make them to ensure that uh, you know they are they are capable to manage a workplace account uh, a lot of them didn't have a smartphone also so we we had those kind of challenges so uh, that is how an appropriate branding has to be looked at a right platform for circulation has to be looked at for example my audience probably would not have a whatsapp i'll have to send an sms or i'll have to uh do an ivr with them because that works with them you know uh, so you know i'm style i'm talking in a hema malini style and giving them some gyan on an ivr uh, they love it and they'll they'll follow it i follow the same piece in north maybe in south i'll pick up a south based actress and follower so we did a rajini kant uh, uh, you know jig uh, for our south people uh, because they enjoyed it and they they got the message <laughs> that's what is important i think uh, and that's the that's the reap model of ours when i talk about the leap model um, the acronym stands for learn competency earn incentives assess gaps perform deliverables so that's the twist to it when we are talking about building competency we attach an incentive angle to it that means ye competency hum tumhari build kar rahe hain but we give them a slab saying ki you know if you reach here it's a measurable kind of a thing if it's a measurable competency then we give them a slab and that's attached to the incentive model of theirs which which makes them happy so they learn and they earn we assess gaps again and p stands for performing deliverables could be any deliverables can be business driven cannot be business driven as well so uh, so that's the model to it when i when i probably tell you a bit about reap uh, i am getting into the model now uh, and then i will take it up with my specific set of examples what is reap it is the new employee experience focused process of building competencies without spending long hours in training rooms that's the process and um, uh, that's how when i read this topic uh, i thought uh, you know this is worth the share uh, and that's how we are here so uh, when i talk about r it talks about review content that means i need to figure out what is the content that i need to send to my set of people <coughs> if probably it's my leadership team uh, if it is going specifically to my leadership team i would probably send them video nuggets i can send them you know nice attractive emailers i could send them uh, you know good funny memes which are which are also bringing out the message uh, uh, you know i could do that if um, let's say it's a it's a dst audience dst are my direct sales team the fleet on street if that's the piece of audience then probably a rap song will work well with them uh, probably a song will work well which works in their location uh, geography Uh, uh you know a jingle will which is relatable so that will work so that's the kind of that's the kind of uh, creative uh, uh, team which we are working on at this point in time and uh, uh, obviously we use our animated experience sharing videos all of that is there however uh, we try and um, manipulate it or we try and customize it as per the audience to which it is reaching when i talk about my uh, policy refreshers my like you can see the employee focused engagement campaigns they are also promoted in the local language to give that flavor to that person that really helps even if i am doing an e event uh, let's say me or somebody from my team is is hosting the event we usually take up one local person from there so if it's gujarat we take up somebody who's an employee uh, you know we work we kind of collaborate together and we run that e event to to ensure that that imparting happens uh that's the r piece of piece of it uh very very critical and i feel uh, a lot of places uh, the content which is being sent is not aligned to the audience to which it is sent so that's how this was very critical for us uh the second of course the critic the most important one which is the meat uh, are my engagement interventions so we actually build these competencies through multiple engagement interventions which like i said is customizable uh so first one is my e learning interventions on moneyversity so we have our own training app which is our tra training application which promotes my mobile learning on the move learning uh, and it's like a continuous thing i keep receiving those notifications 
so that's what we have made our people and that this happened during the lockdown that we made them capable of managing a money university kind of an app it is it is like a netflix of learning yeah and uh, it provides e learning intervention so we we ensure that whatever domain product process policy uh, knowledge has to be imparted to these people the skills which need to be imparted they are imparted through uh, e learning interventions on money university so on money university we can we can hold our uh, uh, you know virtual learning training sessions we can hold multiple quizzes uh, we can hold polls uh post sessions and prior to sessions to take their feedback and to also understand that what is it that they need uh we also have a lot of virtual interventions like quizzes bingos i'll give you an example post this uh, we have e events we have r and rs so we done uh, massive uh, e uh, you know r and r events over post covid uh, i think uh, we've we've almost concluded 22 uh, e events pan india uh, which is huge because uh, uh you know running uh, one particular event took uh, you know days of toil and hard work so that's how it is we started doing virtual branch visits so we have around 106 branches uh we have zonal hr teams we collaborated with them and it is virtual branch visits which each of them we did live webinars by industry experts and domain specialists so that also helps in cultivating uh so probably i'll take this piece in detail post this but <clears throat> this helps in building that kind of a competency which is missing so these were targeted in that perspectives for example uh, for the compliance team we did a session by the eny team uh, you know they came and uh, i mean it was a virtual session over zoom but they came and they uh, spoke to our entire compliance legal taxation audit teams uh, and imparted how post covid uh, what kind of uh, compliance based uh, uh, evaluation and changes would come in so that's also something which uh, we invested in employee contest very very critical and uh, this really works because what we do is we we um, we build work on that competency uh, through multiple training interventions and we run a employee contest parallel to it which is um, incentive driven so we tell them ki okay this is what you achieve this is what you get this is what you achieve this is what you get so that uh, that ability to convert uh is becomes faster and that also helps us evaluate whether the competency building has happened or not happened gamification of business goals absolutely so i think that's what we did um, starting um, first of april to 30th of april uh, we invested a lot on gamification of business goals so for example my call center team you know there was a lot of work which is happening on the calling bit of it health insurance people were selling over over phones so we started this concept from the uh, game of thrones we started a concept of game of phones so there was a there was a contest of phones uh, you know it basically calculated the broadly it calculated the call time of the person how is he engaging what is the customer uh, <coughs> experience uh, feedback which is receiving post the call so broadly it wasn't that but when i talk about uh, when i when i branded it like a game of phones kind of a thing which is uh, you know followed by uh, maybe a you know small snippet of so each training session was followed by a small um, episode of the game of thrones piece so so we kind of everything was virtual <clears throat> and hardly any cost because we were told to do all of this in zero cost which was obviously tough uh, so we had to pull in some uh, lack here and there but um, and broadly it was all under the zero cost piece so uh, i think which was amazing uh, even you know post we settle or hopefully post covid we would want to stick to these interventions maybe couple it up with a lot of face to face interaction also i'm not saying so it could be a blended learning approach but but i think it's it's working out perfectly well for us uh, at least when i talk about amber chatbot so we have a ai driven chatbot for our employees uh, called amber which talks to our people on various tenures so after each month it will pop up on the screen and talk to take their feedback uh, we ask specific questions which we want them to answer and they, they they give us their feedback this really helps so through this we get to know whether they found it useful or not the intervention whether they feel any change has happened or not sometimes we get results where we have not realized that there is this change but the person realizes so uh, i think a brilliant uh, i think this is again a brilliant approach so this helps us close loops so amber chatbot helps us in the leap angle of it the evaluation etc happens here a when i talk about reap 
A angle starts for appropriate branding. When I say appropriate branding, I mean to say the glamour around it. So, you know, our organization, uh, we are majorly youth. Uh, when I say we are majorly youth, the uh, average, um, uh, uh, probably age of people would be around 25, 26. And uh, like I said, most of them are graduates only. So they like the glamour angle to it. Uh, so we package everything we sell uh, from a competency standpoint. We package it superbly well. So even if it's a, it's a business contest, uh, you know, we'll call it like a, uh, you know, so a recent one was called Incentive Ka Mahadamal. You know, and every day it used to come with a gif of a Bollywood uh, star, you know, a Bollywood scene into it where the person is saying, Ki, come on, hurry up, you can perform, you know, stuff like that. So uh, that was quite interesting. I think people took it really well. Uh, and, you know, there were there were times, you know, when somebody, so, you know, there was a leaderboard which used to come after that, you know, okay, well, this is what you've done. Uh, you know, you've achieved, you were the top performer of the day, you were the top performer of the week. So these business contests really help. Uh, it's just that you have to brand it slightly well. Uh, you know, brand it like a hep thing. Similarly, we recently concluded, like I said, our E uh, event, our E R N R, which we call as Pride. So we did a E event this time uh, on the platform. Uh, so we used Zoom for it. However, we had uh, given a couple of, uh, you know, so a couple of lakhs to uh, make it slightly jazzy and have a glamour uh, related package to it. We packaged it in a way that people thought uh, that this is something they cannot really miss. And that's what happened, you know, we almost had 95% of people, uh, you know, join all our events. So we've held around 22 events so far and, uh, you know, that's how it is. So the communication has to be serious. So when they attended the event, there was glamour to it, there was fun, there were talent hunts and, you know, other things around it. But um, uh, there was a serious communication which followed the baseline of it. You know, we themed the entire event on war theme. So now the entire theme said, Ki, okay, we are all warriors. Uh, it is time that we kind of uh, ensure that we uh, deliver our best because uh, until and unless we raid the game, until and unless we uh, kind of uh, attempt to be a warrior, uh, there are chances that we might fall through. So that was the basic messaging of the entire event. Everything was around that theme. Uh, so our r, &R awards were also called gallantry awards. So people received an Ashoka Chakra, Paramveer Chakra, like that. So, but uh, so there was a, so that's why I said we tried to make base communication strong, which was my business communication. And we tried to add a lot of fun to it. Uh, a lot of, um, uh, a lot of entertainment to it. Uh, obviously, which suited my audience. I next come to the platform for circulation, I already told you. So we use a lot of uh, WhatsApp interaction. We have a lot of WhatsApp groups which we use. We use Workplace by Facebook, mails, SMSs, IVRs really work. Uh, <clears throat> and we do like a jingle jig also on IVRs. So that also work. We have our own intranet, adrenaline. So all communication also goes there. Everybody needs to log in at least once a day on that. So people do not miss that. Anything we're promoting, advertising, it goes there. Uh, apart from that, we obviously have our external social media handles broadly to uh, uh, sh uh, broadly to kind of showcase what we do to the external world, customers, stakeholders. But our internal employees are also, you know, kind of if they get time for other uh, from other platforms, they can uh, also view that. So that was my REAP model. What did we understand from the REAP model? That this model helps me uh, build any missing competency or fulfill the competency need of my organization for my employees. It is working absolutely fine for them. I mentioned about the engagement interventions. Yeah. So when I talk about engagement interventions in the, in the previous slide, the E part of it, I wanted to kind of <coughs> talk a little more about it because uh, eventually it is these engagement interventions which, which would provide that competency shift to our people. So like I said, we do a lot of e-learning interventions. Uh, just may we have our VILTs. VILTs are my virtual uh, uh, integrated learning training sessions. Mobile learning because we have an app, Moneyversity. Social learning. So we do a lot of social learning. How do we do social learning? We basically have different people. So you know, it's like a task which we give. Okay. So, so we posted a video on, so let's suppose I want to improve the sales pitch over phone. So we posted a video on Moneyversity asking people to now go, uh, go and, uh, you know, watch those videos and then come back and answer these questions. Uh, we promote all of that on social media. 
so uh, in the sense whatsapp so when they come back uh, we do like a quiz kind of a thing over whatsapp itself uh, that really helps uh, you know let's suppose you answer something it's a good take for me etc so that's more like a social learning which we do we do a lot of knowledge collaboration tools is what we use so like a knowledge nugget kind of a thing if you've learned something it, if somebody has liked uh, you know you, we can probably request you to share it with me as well so then fix up a session so you can so it's more like a mentor mentee kind of a thing we also do a lot of employee curated content which really helps for example i make spox right so we did this recently we we branded it like a gyan guru campaign so we called it a gyan guru and we gave everybody a topic so everybody when i say all my regional heads were given a topic and they were said okay okay you will find a very very apt video from your space on this particular topic so we chose a topic where the competency building was supposed to happen right so we chose that kind of a topic so these guys uh, they were supposed to get those videos uh, uploaded on maniversity we uploaded it on maniversity for them and uh, we thought that's a great idea uh, let's do that they were then supposed to drive their own videos over maniversity so it was like a like and share panda so on maniversity itself they uh, asked you know obviously they were pushing their people to you know check out their videos read their videos answer the quizzes there which ensured that each regional who had brought in their own video he ensured that his entire team of 200 people watched that video and if not 100% uh, when you watch a video even if 5 10% of that video goes in the head uh, that works for us because uh, that's what we want what i'm trying to say here is that we are not the only ones who are driving we partner with our business heads our regional heads our uh, employees on the ground to uh, build this competency it is just the it is just the entire idea of setting up that culture that that competency building can happen like this that's what is important uh, it can work for a lot of organizations maybe for a lot uh, uh, it may not but snippets of this will work blended learning i already told you this is what we'll move uh to post covid because we i feel that the virtual learning learning platform was exceptionally well taken by our people and uh, besides saving a lot of cost it has really worked well for us um however i still would want to take a stance on saying that human interaction uh would always take that kind of an up uh, and needs to be coupled with uh, uh the virtual side of it personally that's my take second piece of course virtual interventions to be do we did a lot of uh, behavioral bingos we did town halls with our leadership team to basically tell them about what is it that business wants where are it where is it that we are moving we did a lot of live webinars with uh, ex industry experts pandemic specific webinars also we did e events like i said entertainment talent hunts r and rs so that's also something all of this eventually helped in uh, you know capturing one particular goal uh from a competency standpoint for us personally um uh, it could also be as simple as boosting the motivation of the person uh boosting the confidence of the person because uh during post covid we realized a lot of people who came back to work they wanted that they wanted that kind of self confidence on them we did a lot of virtual branch visits uh, which we have set up again those uh, help in branch specific customized training deliveries that so so if i'm going to a specific branch i'll understand through amber i'll understand their specific needs where is it that they are lacking and we do a customized training program for them we do focused employee communications for them amber chatbot i told you gamification business contest that's something we do uh so when i talk about these engagement interventions i now come to those examples which i took in the first slide right so like this example for example huh? so i i i told you that you know the first competency type on the skill side was product selling shift that means uh, the basic product which we are selling we moved completely to health insurance so what did we do to build that kind of competence we had to build it in one month obviously i would not say that we were 100% uh, there after a month but uh, what we did was we did a combination of business contest coupled with virtual trainings so my health insurance was my new product so we did training sessions for people on health health insurance which were done in separate batches and uh, the batches were not more than 50 people right alongside we were doing a lot of demo calls for them on the uh, as a part of the training session itself this was followed by our business contest called the incentive ka mahadamal saying ki aap itna karoge this is what you'll earn on the incentive side correct so anyways they were not getting their 
uh, usual incentive so this idea this concept uh, had both kind of pushes one was ki chalo kuch naya sikhenge that was there second of course was that uh, we'll get to earn more and post covid obviously for two months they saw that kind of a lag in there uh, money coming home uh, so that's obviously there uh, so we launched this incentive kam hath mal we linked up our incentives and earnings side of it uh we also did a couple of uh, trainings on process digitization so wherever the the process became digital uh that has to be you know talked to people so we did some uh, policy refreshers which is sent to people continuously we did idrs we did uh, uh, a lot of videos which are floated to people telling them ki, okay this is the process which you need to follow i'll take the second example yeah so this is pretty interesting so we uh, so so we needed a behavioral shift in our people right when i say behavioral shift uh, we did uh, like i said <clears throat> that motivation was missing in a lot of people so we had to bring back that motivation uh, we uh, people were anyway struggling with the pandemic thing leaders probably uh, were pushing their teams too much uh, there was a lot of stress in that kind of a relationship on a lot of leadership ends and we kind of figured that out obviously amber was our only friend uh, the chatbot helped us understand ki is region mein ye leader ke sath ho raha hai problem so we thought uh, we will kind of launch something called a power 60 campaign a uh, very interesting campaign power 60 spoke about basically this was our uh, group of 60 leaders our top management uh, who are my head of departments and they are uh, 62 in number so we call them power 60 we branded this power 60 thing and we ran a, a multiple series of leadership webinars for them right within our network of people there were domain webinars there were uh, also competency uh, driven webinars there were behavioral driven webinars and we did one or two engagement uh, activities with them So, for example, um, for Power Sixty, I did a leadership bingo, right? So, like this, this kind of thing. So, this is a leadership bingo where I said that okay, I had various. It, it was like a tambola we used to play. So, it, it's similar to that, <coughs> but uh, you know, let's say my B stands for being empathetic. So, my bingo had a meaning uh, for people. So, leadership bingo, uh, multiple uh, series of leadership bingos <coughs> was what we ran. which basically captured the the thought process of our uh, people you know suppose for example i've asked have have you had tough conversations with team members so if they've had they have to strike the thing so this is more like an engagement we could easily <coughs> run over zoom and we used to do that post every webinar <coughs> which was scheduled Uh, uh you know there were leaders who you who kind of you know felt that they didn't know this particular thing about their team member or they've done something similar so there's you know one of these uh, which talks about that are there moments where your team member has come to you several times saying that i want to talk to you sir ma'am uh, but you've always you know because you've had too much work you've shirked him away there's there was one uh, one this thing so i think on this i got a lot of people responding saying that yaar humne kiya hai you know that kind of a thing so it was so this power 60 was more about uh, you know realizing where we are going wrong and so it was not like people people there was something a very solid gap in the competency it was just that covid had made uh, brought in that kind of a behavioral change maybe people were insecure maybe people were saying ki yaar kaam nahi hai what will happen other things but this entire power 60 initiative um, really brought in a change and we've not ended it since then uh, we run it uh, almost uh, twice or thrice every month we have one session right so which is which is uh, which is going on at this point in time similarly we did a like i said about the pride point 5 we did a warrior theme this time like i was telling you so so these are some glimpses from there we did a talent hunt again with a war theme we did some uh, gallantry awards we did some national event kind of thing so we did those regional rnr events which is followed by a national event pan india again you know that had a uh, very very good response uh similarly uh, uh you know for our our youth uh, because our fleet on street people we wanted to tell them that you are the ones who are driving our organization ahead right uh so we picked up the gully boy idea like i was telling you we did a rap for them you know we we kind of made multiple series of raps and probably if i'll have time i'll probably uh, share one with you but uh, uh we did multiple raps uh, for our people uh 
primarily for the youth just to motivate them to tell them that they are the ones who will take the organization ahead uh, so that's also pretty pretty interesting uh, uh, the rap thing well taken people could understand the messaging it could rejuvenate people ki ha you know they're not being thrown away from the organization the third example i spoke about the attitudinal shift uh, uh, pretty tough uh, pretty tough because I, I think this takes uh, very very long to uh, be inculcated within the team uh, pretty long and uh, i personally thought that um, uh, there were two things which we were working on one was to bring in that shift in the thought process of people that digital competencies need to be built and this is an attitudinal change mind you this is not something which is a behavioral change. So, for example, most of my leaders are in the age bracket of 45 plus. A lot of them say they hate technology, right? So, you know, they can probably play a YouTube video or operate on WhatsApp. That's what they can do at max. People like those, I think post-pandemic, because we shifted completely to digital, they were not able to guide their teams. And we realized that was a solid gap. Because that needed the person to probably unlearn and relearn uh, the technology bit of it. Uh, and, th and that's the digital uh, angle to it completely. So that was one which we've been continuously working on. We've not, not been able to meet this goal, but we are working on consistently. So we do a lot of video launches. We do a lot of virtual uh, gaming sessions for people. Uh, you know, uh, I think a lot of awareness driven engagements is what we do that means for example i have uh, passed sanctioned a loan on uh, my digital uh, tab okay so we provide all our uh, dsts all our street on street people a tab okay they pass a loan on that tab so that's how they become digital everything is digital now photo photos of everything they upload there and they pass the loan they can do that in six hours some of them have done it in one hour we capture their story we capture their show, story and share it with other team leaders, other people, telling them, okay, okay this is what they've done, you can also do. Right? And uh, the intent is they do it pretty well. Uh, you know, that's the, that's the idea. So that kind of experience sharing videos and GIFs is also what we're circulating to people. That helped us bring that kind of, at least people have started being open to the idea of exploring digital competencies. So, but a lot of my power 60 leaders, like I was talking about, have that, uh, have that, uh, you know, so they're not really, uh, they're not too cool with the idea. So that building up is happening. Uh, the second piece, which again, we are working on is our alignment to ESG. So we wanted to, we wanted our people and we've been working on it, on it for years, but we now started using virtual platforms for it. Uh, we wanted our people to be more <coughs> aware and socially more responsible, right? So towards environment, E stands for environment, S stands for society, G stands for governance and complete profitability is, uh, is our own internal ESG initiative. So we say that we are completely profitable when we work for our people, for our organization, for our society and our environment. That's when we call ourselves completely profitable. That's how this term, complete profitability. So this is also something we worked on over the last couple of months. Uh, we've done a lot of virtual gaming sessions. We've done some, uh, you know, complete profitability puzzles, uh, you know, complete profitability driven treasure hunts virtually. But a uh, lot of fun, uh, but eventually people just kind of have started absorbing the idea. The idea was just creating awareness. That's what we've done through our engagements. But slowly it's getting into people. What, so simple things, you know, that keep a pot on your workstation. If you're sitting at home, working from home, keep a pot on your workstation, you know, like that. Uh, replace plastic bottles with glass bottles at home. So simple, basic stuff, but we started that. Other thing which I mentioned in the last block was um, our goal of managing health goals of people. So we've, we've uh, tied up with HealthyFi, which is an app. Uh, that's also something we've started post pandemic, so where we've started, uh, you know, kind of making people aware on the health angle of it, because uh, COVID began from it, right? Um, if you had that immunity, uh, you could probably save yourself from COVID, you know. Which does not, so that does not mean that people in my organization haven't got COVID. So we've had COVID, we have a specific COVID caretaking team uh, for our people. But um, uh, this was something we thought it will be a good initiative and we picked it up. Um, it is very, very close to competency because in a way, that's an attitudinal shift where people have to bring their focus back on health. 
uh, uh, we coupled it up with a couple of webinars and yoga sessions, gym sessions. There were a lot of gymnasium sessions for people. Um, there have been meditation sessions for people coupled with Healthy Five. But uh, I think people, that's also something which people have started enjoying now. So that closes my examples on, so uh, just to kind of summarize it, uh, I spoke about competency need, which we thought in our organization. I took my organization's example. Uh, I told you how we decided to uh, work on the strategy for building that competency, which was my reap to leap model, uh, which is working pretty well for us. And uh, then I did it under that reap to leap model for those three examples, what we did, uh, right? Uh, concluding with LEAP, obviously, like I said, it is the process of evaluating the results of my LEAP model, right? So usually Amber works for us here. Uh, we do a lot of one-to-one. -one. We go to virtual branch visits, evaluate people. That really helps. Uh, but uh, that's the that's the uh, conclusion of my... So that completes my competency cycle. So when I say that, okay, uh, results are fine, I give a tick to the person. You know, that's, that's how it works. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's working pretty well with us for a leap to leap model. Happy to uh, answer any specific questions, share uh, feedback, inputs. Uh, if you want to ask anything, more than happy. Okay, I think uh, let me break the ice. Uh, Sheetal, uh, do you want to throw some light on challenges that you would have faced uh, while I think there are a couple of interventions? One Anybody, uh, you can write your questions over chat window or uh, I'm checking on the chat window as well or you can ask your questions to me. I can't believe there's a question. Sheetal, you can hear me. Thank you, Septinda. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, that means a lot to me. Thank you, Meet. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Septinda, absolutely. It is a dynamic model. Uh, absolutely dynamic and believe me, we're changing it every day. Uh, uh, yes, it is practical. Uh, it would be, one would be easily be able to replicate it to their own uh, industry, their own organizations as well. Uh, you know, for example, ours is a sales driven setup. Uh, you work know, it really works, but you, uh, you need a, a you know, good bunch of creative freaks to work on it. Uh, so that is what is required. But in any other organization also, this model can be easily uh, replicated. Thank you, Meet. Uh, happy to share more uh, uh, if ever we get an opportunity to meet, talk, virtually connect. Uh, Winnie, great question. Uh, my employees, uh, like I said, uh, there are various uh, angles to it. 80% um, of my employees overall have given a very, very positive feedback on, on uh, our interventions. But as such, obviously, they do not know that there is a model behind it. Because um, we do not, I mean, um, I, I think their capacity is not that much to understand, uh, uh, you know, so much uh, uh, in detail on that model. What we do is we run a particular employee engagement intervention, which is focused towards one competency building. And then we try and understand from them that this intervention was You know, that's how it is. This intervention was laga. That is it. That's what we ask them. So the intervention specific feedback broadly is uh, quite positive. I mean, 80-85% uh, people respond very, very positively on it. And uh, we are hoping to kind of convert the rest of them as well. So uh, long way to go, but a uh, lot of stuff waiting for us. Thank you, Manisha. Thanks a lot. <laughs>